<laughs> I'm Aki, and I've got a story about something that happened on my reservation in Alberta, Canada. Maybe you've heard of the MMIW issue. It's about indigenous women in Canada being more likely to go missing or be hurt. It's a pretty big deal because even though indigenous women are just a small part of all the women in Canada, they face a lot more danger. Ever since I was a little kid, like seven or eight, everyone always told me to watch out when I played outside. They said someone might grab me. That thought was super scary, but as I got older, I didn't think it would actually happen to me. This happened in the summer of 2015 when I was 15. I was hanging out with my old buddy. We'll call them Taylor. Taylor and I were at my grandma's house figuring out how to get to another friend's place. It was going to be an hour's walk. We did walks like this all the time, even when it got dark. It was still kind of light out, so we thought we should get going while we could still see. Around us were just fields, hills, and a dirt road with gravel. I remember we had walked past the last few houses, and after that, it was just us and the open land. So, Taylor and I were walking and chatting about random stuff. We started talking about people getting taken because, back in August 2011, a girl had disappeared from our reservation. It was getting darker and creepier as we talked about it, and then we saw a car in the distance. We grabbed each other, hoping the car would just drive by, and it did. It was some folks who lived near my grandma. We laughed it off, thinking we were just scared for no reason. But then I heard another car. We were still jumpy, so I turned to check it out. My stomach flipped. It was this big, dark blue van with these bright orange-colored wheels and mirrors that looked like someone painted them by hand. I told Taylor, There's a van coming our way. Taylor shoved me into a ditch away from the road. The van started to slow down, crawling next to us. I saw there were two guys inside. The one driving looked like he was in his 40s or 50s, bald, kind of big, with super bright blue eyes and wearing a white tank top. The guy next to him seemed a bit younger, really thin, and had some hair. The back windows of the van were painted over in blue, which freaked me out. I couldn't stop thinking about why someone would do that. I was holding on to Taylor, really scared now. Then the driver leaned out a bit and said, Where are you girls headed? Do you need a lift? Taylor pushed back with a quick, No thanks, and pulled me further away towards the fence. But the driver insisted, Come on, let me give you a ride. It's no trouble at all. The story stops here, but there's a sense of tension and unease as the situation unfolds, leaving the reader wondering what will happen next with Aki and Taylor as they face this intimidating encounter. Taylor's voice was strong and clear. No, we really don't want a ride. You need to leave us alone. But then the van screeched to a stop. We froze when we heard the driver snap at the other guy. Go get him! Without missing a beat, Taylor shoved me into action and we bolted. Taylor was fast, yanking at the barbed wire fence to make a gap, and I dived through it. My knee got caught and scratched, but I barely felt it. Fear was the only thing on my mind. After we both got through, we ran down the hill without once looking back. The grass and bushes were thick, and we knew there could be mice or snakes, but that didn't matter right then. We could just about see my other friend's house in the distance. We weren't safe yet, so we ducked down in the bushes. I peeked up the hill and saw the van creeping along, looking for us. We hoped they'd give up, but our hearts sank as they took the road down, still hunting. Luckily. They missed us in our hiding spot and drove past. Seeing they were gone, we made a break for it to my friend's house. We burst in and told my friend's parents everything. They said we had to tell our moms. I told my mom what happened, but she couldn't do much. She just said I couldn't walk alone anymore. Now, you might wonder why we didn't call the cops. The thing is, around here, the cops don't always do much for us. The police don't have a great track record with helping folks from my reservation. That's just how it is for indigenous people here in Canada. So I didn't report it. I was scared they wouldn't take us seriously. Plus, I didn't have any proof, no phone to take pictures or anything. I regret not reporting it for safety's sake. And weirdly enough, I've seen that van around even years later. 
I even snapped some pictures of it once. One time at a gas station, I saw the driver. I just glared at him, shaking my head. I don't know if he recognized me, but he looked away and left fast. I'll always remember that moment. I keep thinking, what if we hadn't run? Would I still be here, telling this story at 23? That day was a real-life lesson about the risks for indigenous women here. So, to my indigenous folks, always be careful. Don't trust too easily and listen to your instincts. And to the guys in that van, I've got photos and I know who you are. I hope they realize we all know what they're up to and I never want to see them in person ever again. Once upon a time, there was a 16-year-old guy, let's call him Jack, who was in the 11th grade at his local high school. This tale begins with Jack sitting around, listening to spooky stories on the internet. It stirred up a memory from when he was younger, about 12 or 13, during a cold school break in 7th grade. A family living a short walk away asked him to look after their pet while they went on a holiday trip for a week. Jack's mom and the neighbor's mom were good friends, so everyone was okay with him going over there three times a day. His job was to feed the pet, make sure it had water, let it out for bathroom breaks, and spend some time playing. Everything was normal at first. Jack liked the chill in the air. He lived in Arizona, where it's usually pretty hot, so winter was a nice change. But near the end of the week, he overslept and found his phone battery dead. He was in a hurry because he needed to check on the pet and didn't want it to have any accidents inside. So he decided to leave his phone charging at home and dashed over to the neighbor's place. Luckily, when he arrived, everything was clean and the pet was fine. He finished up his chores and was about to head back. Stepping out the door, Jack locked up and saw a black truck crawling along the road. The man driving it seemed lost. Maybe looking for an address, Jack thought. He didn't pay much mind to it and started walking on the sidewalk to get back home. But then, the truck pulled up ahead of Jack, on the wrong side of the street. As a kid, Jack was always a bit jumpy, and this really set off his alarm bells. He wondered why the truck stopped so abruptly, but figured maybe the driver needed that house. Still, something inside told him to run back to safety, so he bolted toward the neighbor's house again. The moment he did, the truck jerked back to life, spun around, and came at him. Jack wasn't the fastest kid, having been a bit heavier in his younger days, but he was close enough to the house not to get too winded. His hands were shaking so badly he almost dropped the keys. He managed to get inside and lock the door just in time. Jack wanted to call his dad, but then he remembered his dead phone lying useless back in his room. Peeking out the little door window, he saw the truck pass by the house three times, real slow. Jack decided to stay inside, turned on the TV in the living room, and tried to calm down. He figured the man in the truck was probably just lost, and he was just being overly cautious. After chilling out for 20 minutes, he thought the coast would be clear. Jack sneaked a look out of the front window and even tiptoed upstairs to get a better view. He couldn't see that truck anywhere. So there Jack was, convincing himself he was just being silly, getting worked up over nothing. He stepped outside again, his eyes darting around to check every corner as he made his way home. The street was quiet and no one seemed to be around. Jack started walking, his eyes scanning everywhere, hoping he wouldn't see that truck again. But just as he let out a sigh of relief, thinking he was safe, he spotted it. The truck was parked right at the corner of his street. His heart sank. He wanted to dash home, but that would mean running right by the truck, and he was sure he couldn't outrun the man if it came down to it. Feeling trapped, Jack ran back to the safety of the neighbor's house, tears streaming down his face. He had never been so scared. He was just a few feet from the driveway when he could hear the truck revving its engine behind him. Jack flew into the house, locked the door, and collapsed into tears. For over an hour, he sat there, hugging the pet, too scared to move. Jack hadn't faced anything like this before. He was just a kid, and he didn't know what to do. Finally, 
Feeling a bit braver, he decided he had to make a run for it. He burst out the door and sprinted with all his might. Surprisingly, his legs were moving faster than he expected. As he rounded the corner, there was the truck again, but this time Jack didn't slow down. He could hear the truck coming up behind him, and fear nearly overcame him. With his home just a stone's throw away, the truck pulled up in front, blocking his path. In a split-second decision, he cut across his neighbor's lawn, dashing into his own yard and flung the door open. Once inside, Jack couldn't hold back the sobs and the fear of what could have happened. His dad, just up and starting his day, rushed over, confused by the noise. Jack tried to explain through the sobs and gasps for air, but the words just wouldn't come out right. By the time he could share the whole story, the truck and the man were long gone. The only thing Jack could say was that it was a black truck. His dad seemed to think Jack was making a big deal out of something small, but Jack knew what he saw. His dad did his best to comfort him, and even made him breakfast, which was nice. To someone else, it might have looked like Jack was scared for no real reason. But if they'd seen how that truck moved, always when Jack did, they'd know something was definitely wrong. Jack couldn't shake off the thought of what might have happened if that man had caught him. This scary moment taught Jack something important. Always be aware of your surroundings and keep your phone charged, ready for any emergency. He wanted to tell everyone to stay safe and listen to their gut feeling because it might just save their life. Once upon a time in South Africa, there was a young woman named Sarah who was 23 years old. She was kind of short, standing at 5 feet 5 inches, and she had a small frame and a youthful face, which made her look much younger than she was. Now, Sarah often found herself in uncomfortable situations because, let's be honest, she attracted a lot of attention that she didn't want. It's probably because she was a part-time model and also because she lived in a place where crime was pretty common. And if you ask around, a lot of people in South Africa would tell you they've had similar experiences. One sunny day, Sarah decided to spend some time with her mom at the mall. They planned to have a fun day shopping for clothes and makeup. But while they were out, Sarah noticed her mom kept looking around like she was worried about something. Curious, Sarah asked her mom what was wrong. Her mom leaned in and whispered that a man was giving Sarah strange looks. She pointed to a man behind them. Sarah's mom was always super protective, sometimes even a bit too much. But Sarah knew it was because her mom loved her a lot. So Sarah glanced back and saw a tall guy dressed in heavy winter clothes, which was odd because it was super hot that day. They were both wearing light summer dresses and sandals to keep cool in the heat but this man was dressed like he was ready for a snowstorm. They both agreed it was a bit odd and moved to a different aisle, hoping to avoid him. However, no matter where they went, this man seemed to pop up right behind them. After about 10 minutes of this strange game of follow the leader, Sarah's mom said she had a bad feeling and wanted to leave. So they both headed for the mall exit, not even bothering to buy anything. As they walked out, Sarah noticed the man was still following them, but keeping some distance. It was really creepy. They didn't think to tell security. They just wanted to get out of there fast. When they reached the parking lot, the man finally caught up with them. He came up close and asked if they knew where he could find a phone repair place. This was strange because they had just walked past several repair shops on their way out. Sarah's mom didn't hesitate. She grabbed Sarah's arm, pulled her back, and told the man they couldn't help him. They turned to walk away, but the man insisted. He showed them his phone and said it was very important for him to get it fixed. He looked frustrated and then asked Sarah directly, pleading because he said he wasn't good with English. Sarah's mom was having none of it. She tightened her grip on Sarah's arm, and they both hurried towards their car. The man's face was turning into a scowl, showing his frustration at being denied help. Sarah began to feel a little sorry for the man. She thought maybe he was just a visitor who didn't know his way around and needed some help. 
She started to explain, Look, there's a shop just inside the mall on the left. You really can't miss it. But the man was insistent, asking Sarah to show him the way because he was struggling with English. Her mom, though, was not having it. She held on to Sarah even tighter and repeated firmly, We can't help you. She was actually trembling at this point. The man seemed to understand they wouldn't help and walked away. Now this mall has some big white columns right at the exit. They're so large you can't see what's on the other side, and they have these bushy plants around them for decoration. And that's when the weirdest thing happened. Another man popped out from behind one of these columns and snapped a picture of Sarah with a flash. It was all so quick that Sarah and her mom were frozen in shock, not even able to scream or do anything. Before they could react, both the picture-taking man and the man who had been following them dashed off into the parking lot, jumped into a car, and zoomed away. Sarah's mom was still holding her arms super tight as they tried to make sense of what just happened. They decided to go back inside and get the security team involved, something they now realized they should have done earlier. The security guard told them something chilling. There had been reports of women disappearing from this very mall, and not long ago. They hadn't seen it in the news, but the guard said there were stories about missing women who still hadn't been found. Sarah wasn't sure if what happened to her and her mom was connected to those other women, but it seemed too weird to be a coincidence. They went to the police, who promised to check the security cameras in the mall, but the police never called them back with any news. Sarah shared her story as a warning to others. She realized that if her mom hadn't been so cautious and alert, they might not have noticed the man following them at all. And who knows what might have happened then. <laughs>